So far in our React Native series, we've shown you how you can accept payments using the Stripe React Native SDK. But what if you wanted to have a little bit more control over what the user experience looks like? Well, in this video, Charlie's going to show us some of the other controls that are available that you could use to customize how you actually accept payments. So Charlie, why don't you tell me exactly what do we what do we talk about today? Yeah, so kind of so far in this React Native series, we've talked about uh, something called the payment sheet, which is Stripe's all-in-one solution for collecting mobile payments. What you can think of it as, uh, if you're familiar with the development experience of a Stripe app on web, is Stripe Checkout. So you know the payment sheet kind of lets you add payment methods totally on the server side. The UI is all handled by Stripe, and you basically just call a function and let Stripe handle the rest. Um, but what we found is that some people actually want a very tailored checkout experience. So uh, they actually want to build their own form input and all these things. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to collect card data directly because that's just a PCI uh, nightmare, to be honest. And so what we also have on the Stripe React Native SDK is some UI components that you can use in your own checkout flow. And this can be thought of uh, the equivalent on web is like Stripe elements. So what we can do is kind of go through and see what these UI components look like and how you can uh, kind of easily implement them in your own checkout flow. All right, great. Well, why don't we, let's head over to your screen and uh, let's take a look. Yeah, great. Um, so what we've got here is essentially the same boilerplate code that we've used in the last couple examples. It's just like a single functional component React Native app. Um, and what we're doing with or from Stripe is, you know, using our Stripe provider wrapper. And what this does is just, you know, initialize Stripe with our publishable key, make sure that we can use all of Stripe uh, or the Stripe SDK's functionality normally. Um, and the other thing we're doing is uh, a confirm payment function. And so we're calling this from our buy button here. Uh, what we're doing first is fetching our payment intent client secret from our server. What that is, is the client secret that's associated with the Stripe object called a payment intent. It's exactly what it sounds like, a customer's intent to pay you some amount. Uh, so yeah, we're generating that on the server side, getting that client secret, passing it into this confirm payment function along with our payment method type, which is card. Um, and what this allows us to do is essentially charge the customer right there on the uh, client side. So let's go ahead and hit the buy button and we can see, you know, we get an error. And this error is actually expected. So we're passing a payment method type of card, but the SDK has no idea like what card data, like what card do we want to charge? We have no idea. So let's go ahead and use uh, these custom UI components to gather that card data. I'm actually going to import both of them. Uh, you will only use one or the other, most likely. So we have card field and card form. Um, you know, rendering these in React is super, super easy. We're just going to add a quick style to each of them. That's dot card field. And then let's just copy and paste this and do card form. Yeah, and I know in the past, you've shown us how to use the payment sheet. So like you're saying, like these are just some different controls that we could use to kind of, you know, be able to have a little bit more flexibility. But essentially, they both, you know, all of them allow us to accept payments. Yeah, it all allows you to accept payments. You know, even the UI inside of the payment sheet is very reminiscent of, you know, this card form UI right here. If mm -hmm. you're collecting uh, card data in the payment sheet, the real pro to the payment sheet is just less code for you as a developer to maintain. And it's a lot easier for you to accept different payment methods. Obviously, card field and card form can only collect card data. Um, you know, you're not going to be collecting bank account details in the card field. That would require a whole new flow for you to design. Um, but if you are collecting card data and you do want a totally customized uh, checkout experience, then card field and card form are really great because you can integrate them, not have to handle card data directly, and uh, what I'll show you right now is that they kind of handle all of the the hookups in the native side so that you don't have to pass like some sort of reference ID to this component to confirm payment. Like the Stripe SDK knows uh, when a card form or card field has been filled out. So let's go ahead, uh, just reload the app, make sure everything's hooked up. And now uh, we'll enter in some test card data and hit buy. Before we had an error, but now we've got a successful payment um, using that card test data, which is which is really great. Um, super easy. We had nothing to do except render the card field, 
and call this function. There's no kind of reference ID or anything like that, which is super cool. And the card form works exactly the same. You know, if I put the test card data in there, it'll kind of function exactly the same. I guess my only question for you would be, obviously these, these controls are different. They do the same thing, but they're a little bit different. Is there a particular use case where I might want to use one versus the other? It's a good question. I think it's really dependent on your own app's design and your checkout flow. Um, one thing to be aware of is that card field, which is this single line input, is a relatively newer API. It's not beta or like brand new or anything like that. Um, but it's just going to have a bit more fleshed out features, uh, a bit more faster development on it, whereas card form has kind of been around longer. Um, so I would actually recommend if both make the most sense to you or make equal sense for your app, I would say to implement card field, um, just because it has a bit more customization options when it comes to something like styling. So if we want to pass in a card style, uh, let's say we want to add a border, um, this is going to be pretty ugly. I'm not a, a UI person, but let's go ahead and just render, you know, a Blue border? I mean, Charlie, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like all developers love doing design stuff. Like what are you right? talking about? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're, you are now seeing the, the apex of my design is right here, this beautiful blue border. Um, I love it. I love it. It looks gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. But there's a couple more customization options that you can do. Um, so one is less UI and more providing like a smooth user experience. So both card field and card form provide this on card change callback. Um, this receives details about the card that's being input, um, you know, as the user does it. So let's say they add a number or change the, the zip code, change the CVC. Um, this on-card change callback is going to be fired with that new card details object. Um, and one of the most useful fields in this details object is actually the, uh, oops, not default, let's go, fields details complete. So this is a Boolean indicating whether or not we have a valid card. So if it's an invalid number, an, uh, an expired card or something like that, or it's just, you know, has some piece of information missing like the CVC, this will come back as false. Um, but if it all looks good and we can attempt to charge it, then this will come back as true. So something that's really useful to do is uh, use this in combination with just like a plain React hook. Uh, so let's say is ready and then set is ready. use state uh, default false. And so let's disable our button, whether we have like a loading or it's uh, not ready. And then whenever the card details are set as complete, we'll call set is ready to true. Um, let's reload the app. So now, uh, since we're listening for that callback, you know, we can see that we can't check out right now. Customer can't buy. They still can't buy. They've only put in a couple numbers, but if we I put in the wrong number there. There we go. And zip code. Now we can buy and check out. So let's click it. Should be all good to go. Payment confirmed, really successful. Nice. Awesome. Um, yeah, and the last thing that I wanted to uh, show off is let's reload the app, get rid of that card data. There is a placeholders uh, uh, setting as well. I, don't believe um, this is offered on the card form. So this is one of those examples where you're kind of set um, or, or you have less of an option on card form. So if this is something that's useful to you, make sure you use card field, but you know, we can set the number to uh, either some suggested number or we can say, hello, welcome. Um, and same goes for, you know, the, the month input, if there's some localized form of a month input that you want to use or something like that, you know, go ahead and use that. Um, yeah. And like disabling the zip code input. So a lot of countries don't have zip codes. Um, obviously for those countries, you want to disable that super easy. It's just a Boolean. Um, but yeah, I think that's, that's basically card field and card form in a nutshell. Um, and the UI and everything is exactly the same on Android as it is on iOS. There's no platform specific code for you to be handling in your React Native app uh, with these components. Nice. And I like what you said earlier is if you're coming from the web world, right? This looks like a lot similar to our, um, our custom elements that we have, right? Like we talked about our payment elements. So it feels like a very natural progression as we're going from web to mobile or 
you know, or even maybe if you're a React Native developer and you want to build a web thing, right? Like the world is fairly similar and we can all connect it to the same Stripe account. And so our users can have a very comfortable experience. Yeah, your users can have a comfortable experience because the UI and the, the functionality they're seeing is really similar. But even you as a developer using Stripe and using React and React Native can have a really comfortable experience because it's not, you know, this whole new, it is a new API that you're using, but it's really just the, you know, React component label that's new. The whole design flow and the implementation flow feels really similar. Um, and that's kind of the goal with the React Native SDK. Awesome. Well, Charlie, thank you again for coming on and, and sharing a lot of that great information with us. And thank all of you that are here watching with us. Um, if you want to learn more about our Stripe React Native SDK, make sure you check out some of the other videos that we did in the series. And also make sure you check out the description for different links and resources that you can use to learn more about building these mobile application experiences with Stripe. Thanks so much. Bye.